everyone, it's Lexi and today I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of books that I will be unhauling. Um, I will be kind of giving these to half price books so um, if you, I'm sorry I won't be doing a giveaway just because it's a lot of books and I'm a university student so I don't have a lot of money. But yeah, so I know like when before when I first started watching booktube I purchased a lot of books that everyone was reading. I was like, oh, I need to get into these, but, um, I don't know, like, I feel now, like, because they've just been sitting on my shelf, and I'm just like, I don't think I'm ever going to get to these. So a lot of these are books that I bought because of BookTube, and the other ones are some that I've read during high school that I'm just kind of getting rid of, or some that I didn't like. So without further ado, let's get started. So this first book is one that you've probably seen in my March wrap-up, and it is I Am The Messenger by Marcus Zusak. And if you've seen my wrap-up, you know that I did not like this book at all. Like, I have a review of this too, so if you want to see more of why I didn't like it, then you can go check it out there just to keep this video quick. But it was just, I don't know, I wasn't really attached to a lot of the characters, and I didn't really feel like I didn't really like the storyline that much. I did find the premise of, like, helping people with the cards very interesting, but overall... I didn't really like this book and it's one that I'm sadly getting rid of. So this one is also I think one that's going to be kind of like controversial and it is The Martian by Andy Weir. I love, love, love the movie but when I read the book I was just, uh, I wasn't feeling it. I was a little bit disappointed in it just because like I felt like the movie just did a much better job. I did find um, Mark Watt need to be very kind of arrogant and I feel like a lot of the stuff in this book was just unnecessary. It was like information overload and yeah I was like this was a major disappointment for me but I definitely like if you did not like the book I'm pretty sure you'll like the movie just because I feel like the movie is so much better. So these next are kind of like novels that I ended up reading in high school and I'm gonna be graduating University of May so I figured I'm never gonna read these so I might as well just get rid of them and they are The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, Nothing But The Truth by A.V. Avi don't know how to pronounce that. Seed Folks by Paul Fleischman. I don't know. <laughs> Can't pronounce any of these. Romeo and Juliet by Shakespeare. And Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Albom. And these were all books that I've read. Like most of these were middle school, grade 9. So yeah, like I just will never read them. I really hate Shakespeare so like all those are going and I just don't think I'll ever read these ever again. So let's clear some space off my shelves. <laughs> So another book that I'll be getting rid of is The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks. Um, I got this after, before I saw the movie and I don't know, like I'm just kind of, like everyone makes this, like The Notebook to seem like it's so much greater than it actually was. Like I was just kind of disappointed I'm just not interested kind of seeing, like reading into it as so, well. Um, it is really quick but I just think it's not really my cup of tea so why give it to someone like so I might as well give it to someone who probably will enjoy it more than me. So these next three are going to be probably something that's highly controversial because I know these books are kind of like a cult favorite on booktube but I just I don't know these were ones I caught, bought because I was seeing so many people talking about on booktube and I just don't feel like I'm ever going to get around to reading them. I don't find them interesting which is kind of sad because I spent some money on all of them but oh well so this one is is like a trilogy and I have Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare like I know so many people like these but I don't know I don't I feel like I've kind of grown past like the YA kind of fantasy so like I'm not willing to kind of push through these so, oh, don't hate me too much, but I feel like I've kind of grown out of, like, the YA kind of world. Kind of going along with, like, the YA, like, Shadowhunters world, I also have the first three books of the City, the Mortar Instruments books, and I have City of Bones, City of Ashes, and then also City of Glass. Again, with, like, kind of, like, the Infernal Devices trilogy, like, I just, I don't think I'm ever going to get around to reading them, and... Might as well give it to someone else who probably will enjoy it more than me. So, yeah. If you feel like I should stick with these, let me know. But I, like, I know so many people talk about these on booktube. I'm just not really interested. So, again, kind of continuing with, like, the YA kind of books. I also will be getting rid of The Selection, The Elite, and the one by Kieran Cass. Like, again, like, this is kind of like a YA dystopian. Like, a mix between The Hunger Games and The Bachelor. And it's, like... I bought these because of booktube again and I just don't think I'll ever get around to reading them. I've kind of moved, like I 
I feel like my reading taste has changed a lot since I started watching booktube so I feel like I'm just never going to get around to these so might as well give these a better home. Okay, so kind of continuing with the YA dystopian, this was a book that I read in the summer and it was okay, like there was a lot of tropes I felt like were in here and I just wasn't really enjoying it. And I tried reading the sequel that came out I think in February and I got about 50 pages into it and it was just like, nope, I can't do it. So this one is The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. Um, yeah, like, I don't know, like it's same, it's like The Hunger Games but just a little different and yeah. This one's got to go. <laughs> so the next one is one that I tried reading over the summer and I don't know like it was very dull like I feel like a lot of people say you have to kind of like push through it and it gets better and better as you read it but this book is massive and I don't think I can push through it and it is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon and I don't know like it's a very big commitment if you're not really enjoying it to like kind of get through it because this book is just huge. And I don't know, like, I did find that, like, kind of the historical kind of element to it to be very interesting, but I don't think it's something that I'm willing to, like, put up with for, like, 800 or so pages, so, yeah. So this next one is one that I ended up reading last year, and it was okay, like, it was being compared to, like, kind of Gone Girl around the time, and I don't know, I feel... Like, I don't know, I really kind of found having, like, an unreliable narrator to be kind of difficult just because I didn't really like any of the characters, and I didn't think it was that good, to be quite honest. It, I kind of saw how it was happening, like, kind of predicted what was going to happen early on, so I think maybe that's why, and it is The Girl on the Train by Paul Hawkins. I know they're making a movie of this, and it's going to be coming out sometime this year, so maybe I'll like the movie a little better, but we'll see. So this also is kind of like a YA fantasy book that I read in the summer and it was okay again like that was kind of like a common theme I feel like with a lot of the YA books that people really love I don't really end up liking and that was the same for this and it is An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir and I did think this was a good if it was like kind of like a standalone but now they're kind of making it into a series and I don't really I'm not interested enough to continue on. And I don't think this will be something that I will probably end up rereading in the like in the future. So, yeah. So these next few things are actually like kind of like I'll throw in here as well because you can send them to Half Price Books, and they're two movies, and they're two CDs. And these are actually sums that I have like doubles of, so I decided to get rid of them for most of them. So yeah. First one is The Hunger Games, and this like I ended up getting the deluxe edition, and then this we got for I ended up getting for Christmas. So I decided to get rid of this one just because like someone else will enjoy it and I don't really need to lay it around. Next one is also a movie that I didn't really end up liking and it was The Time Traveler's Wife. I did read the book when I was in high school and I did not like it and then I don't like this movie adaptation either so yeah might as well just get rid of it if I'm not enjoying it right. So these next two CDs are ones that I ended up getting doubles of just because so might as well get rid of the doubles and the first one is the Speak Now World 2 Live CD and DVD by Taylor Swift and then I have Breathe In Breathe Out by Hilary Duff and I really love this. I really love like kind of like the concert CD. I love Taylor Swift so I already have like another one of this so give it, someone else will enjoy it a lot more if they when they have it and then this one I ended up getting two. This one is I ended up ordering the fan what is it? I forget the name of where I ordered it from but it was like where you get the deluxe ones and extra songs so um and like the box set for it and the, I ended up buying the Target version as well because it had some extra songs in there so this was the one that was just like the standard 12 track one so yeah I don't need an extra one lying around. So this another one is one that I've heard a lot of great reviews about on booktube and it's a YA contemporary book and I've kind of gotten out of the YA genre obviously from this and this is Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon and I don't know, I think it's like an interesting premise to someone who's like allergic to everything, but I don't know, like I'm kind of over that and give it, uh, hopefully someone else who will enjoy it a lot more than I do, like so that's why I'll give it away. So these next are also ones that I've read in high school and, and I think one of them was from university and I didn't really end up liking them, I kept them just because my brother and sister might need it like down the road because I'm a little older than them so they could just use my book but now Georgie my brother is done with 
almost like his English classes, so he's not going to need these anymore, so I can get rid of them finally. And so the first one is Macbeth by Shakespeare, Lord of the Flies by William Golding, Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen, This Boy's Life by Tobias Wolf, How I Live Now by Meg Rosoff, The Cliff Notes for Romeo and Juliet, Lord of the Flies, Great Expectations, Another Great Expectations, um, Macbeth, and then I also have Mary Prince, the history of Mary Prince that I read in my history class. So the next book that I have is Staying Strong 365 Days a Year by Demi Lovato. And this is literally just a bunch of quotes for each day of the year, which I think is interesting, but I, like, I never used it. I thought I would just look at the quotes every day, but I don't know. I never ended up using it. I do think it's a good idea, and why not give it to someone else who will enjoy it? I do love the cover, though, like, with the, fl the, the birds, but oh well. <laughs> so this next book is one that I ended up reading high school, and it scared the heck out of me. And it is In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, and it's about, like, two, like, a family in a small town in, like, I think the late 1950s who were, like, murdered and no one knows what happens and this kind of follows, like, it's based on a true story and it kind of follows, like, the story of, like, police investigation and the people who eventually ended up getting caught. And I really enjoy kind of, like, these things, but this one, it was just horrifying and... It kept me up at night and I don't think I will be one that I will ever reread. But if you're kind of into this, then I highly recommend you check it out. It actually was a good book, but it was just too much for me. <laughs> so this next book is one that I read over the summer and it is 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. I did think this was a good book. It talks about suicide and this guy gets sent a kind of like tapes explaining from the girl who committed suicide for each person and explains like why what they did kind of impacted her. And I did think that was interesting because it shows like how much like what like how even like little something can mean something big to someone else but I don't know I found the I don't know I did have some issues with this book and because it was dealt with like such dark subject matter um I don't think I'll ever end up rereading it and so yeah. <laughs> so these next three are ones that I also bought because of booktube and I don't think I'll ever get around to reading them and that's basically all I'll say about that and that is The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken, Don't Look Back by Jennifer L. Armitrout, The Graceling by Kristen Cashore, and These Broken Stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. These books were ones that I ended up reading in the beginning of the year in January and I was really excited to read these just because I never read them when I was younger and I loved the movies for these and they were The Princess Diaries, Princess in the Spotlight, and then Princess in Love by Meg Cabot, and I don't know, like, they were really hard to get through, I think, because they were, like, the diary, diary entries of, like, a 13-year-old girl, and it was, I don't know, like, it was hard to get into that mindset, and I was just really disappointed with this. I, like, if I want to, like, kind of immerse myself in this world, I'll probably end up watching the movies. So the next two that I have are ones that I read over the summer, and they were An Abundance of Catherines by John Green and Safe Haven by Nicholas Sparks. I did enjoy this. Like, I found the writing style to be kind of interesting, but I don't think I'll ever end up rereading it again, and if I did, I'd probably just watch the movie. And then for The Abundance of Catherines, I did find the, like, I don't understand the point of this novel, to be quite honest. It was, like, I enjoy, did enjoy kind of, like, the math aspect, how he had, like, graphs and charts in there. But other than that, it was just, like, I don't know. <laughs> Not my cup of tea. So the next book is also a YA dystopian. You can kind of see, like, a common theme here. And it is Shatter Me by Tahir Mafi. Again, not interested in kind of, like, the YA dystopian anymore. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I also have The Air by Kira Cass. Again, not really interested in continue on, like, beginning these series, so. The next ones I think are going to be kind of controversial just because, like, this series is so beloved on booktube, and it's like a middle grade, so then you can kind of see how I was kind of disinterested. And they are The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. Again, like, I really kind of want to get into this series just because I do like the, the Greek mythology of it, but they are, like, a middle grade, and I have a hard time kind of reading at that level just because I'm used to more adult fiction. But I will try out the Heroes of Olympus series, I think they're called. 
so yeah I can get kind of like immersed in that world but I don't think I can kind of put up with this <sighs> so finishing out this haul the are two books and they were school books that I read and they're actually considered classics but I could not stand them and the first one is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens um, I did find the story to be a little bit like his writing style like he literally would go on for three pages about the sky and it was just like it was very painful having to read this at school never ever ever again <laughs> this last one is one that I know like a lot of people love and I just I just couldn't get into it and it is The Great Gatsby F. Scott Fitzgerald like I love the 1920s but this book was like I did love like kind of like how Daisy represents the like American dream and how it's on the table I did like that and like kind of like the um the elements that are used throughout but I don't know <laughs> like yeah uh, we'll see I don't know very painful to get through this too but if it was Britain I think maybe a little differently and I, the storyline was just a little better I think I would enjoy it a lot more but so yep <laughs> so that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video I know it's pretty long I'm gonna, it's already at like 23 minutes so I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing to get it down but yeah so don't take offense if I did like if some of these books were your favorite it's just I don't know like I feel like I've kind of grown within the last like few months with like my reading taste like I still do love like Lunar Chronicles like those are probably my favorite and like Harry Potter and like all that but I don't know I feel like especially since I'm graduating university in May like I'm kind of adult now so it's like I don't know my reading taste has changed so I think that's okay um so yeah let me know in the comments below like some of the books that you've unhauled recently so yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time bye guys